second uh, session in in our mini course there on top of me. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but ooh, I'm going to be over here. I don't know about you guys, but it seems like quite a long time ago since we had the first session. Okay, so um, very quickly, we've got quite a lot to do. I'm just going to go first of all about the course overview. So basically, where we are in the mini course process. Um, the review that I mentioned before, which is going to review some of the main principles. I'm sure you haven't forgotten. Um, we're going to look at five case studies. Um, we're going to look at one from me, one from Dan, one from Andre, uh, one from Jenny, um, one from Mexico, which is basically downloading as we speak, so I'm going to have to run out and bring the, the video. <laughs> um, Hold the press. Then we're going to think about our learners, yeah? I think we want to bring it back because that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's thinking about our learners and some of the um, obstacles maybe we need to overcome, some of the things we need to consider when we're integrating learner autonomy into our, club, into our courses. And then we're, what we're going to offer you a few more examples which might kind of form the basis for your little mini projects that you're going to embark on soon. And then at the end of it, hopefully, you will have some idea of what area you'd like to explore with your students. So it's not concrete, it's not going to be set in stone, but hopefully at the end of it you'll have some, you'll be inspired to have chosen uh, one area that you'd like to uh, really focus on. Okay? Um, so course overview then. Um, basically we, we did the theory uh, last, uh, how long ago was it? It was like almost two started months. last term. Two months ago. So we looked at some of the theory, some of the uh, principles of learning autonomy. And today what we're going to do is looking at how the theory translates into practice. Okay? The next session is we're going to hopefully do it next week or the week after so we don't get, we forget it all. And uh, this is when we do our planning. Then we do our experimentation and action which should take about a term. And then finally the last session is where we report back and decide what we've learned from the whole experience. Okay? It's quite straightforward. Okay, um, so first of all, You've got some. Uh, you've got a board there. We like to get the boards out. Um, can you nominate a secretary? Ready. Ready. <laughs> Cheers, Fred. You happy with that, Fred? Okay. Basically, what we want to do the first. Uh, the first task is, if you can recall, um, what are some of the characteristics of an autonomous learner? Yeah. Can anybody give me one example before we begin? Some of the characteristics, when you think of a really autonomous learner, what do you think of? Motivated. Motivated. Excellent. Okay. See so if you can think of eight. Eight characteristics of a um, autonomous learner. Okay. Five minutes. Go. Thanks. being systematic, you know, in your own organising how you're going to learn. Yourself. Right. So that could be, I suppose, some, some kind of learning strategy, oh, yeah. systematic, so could be. And planning their learning as well. So they're, 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 they're similar. Yeah. Anything else that we, we didn't get? Huh? Fun to be around. <laughs> Okay, good. So, so basically what we're going to do uh, today is we're going to look at five little mini case studies. And, you know, that's not to take away from the fact that you guys have been doing really good stuff. Or, you know, the stuff we found out from uh, the last session. You know, you've been integrating all this kind of stuff into your teaching quite regularly. But these case studies are, are kind of designed to highlight key aspects of, of all these... Um, what aspects of learning autonomy, yeah? So what I'd like you to do is while you're listening to the case studies, um, I've got a little worksheet for you. Um, I mean, I know the case studies are going to be riveting, so you might not uh, have time to dedicate to filling in this form. Okay, so basically what, what we're going to do is like, what was the situation, um, what were the students and teachers' role during, during the, uh, the activity or series of activities, how was learner autonomy promoted and what was the outcome? Some of them, uh, you know, feel free, if you don't, if, you know, if you, if you 
prefer just to listen to and take it all in and absorb it. Don't worry about filling in all the columns, but this is just a kind of a little task for you to, to, to guide um, the listening. And do you want to go first? Yeah. I'm going to run out and ship these, uh, these videos down. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, um, I'm just going to have, I've got three mini case studies just related to young learners. So I'm going to look at ways to encourage learner autonomy because we've only got the one class, there's only one two-hour session per week, so it's a way to try and build in, I'm going to look at using the web to try and build in that extra extra level, that extra level of uh, learning that they can check in, error correction, practicing listening. So I did three, three small case studies. The first one is with uh, the age group for pandas. Does anyone know the, the age group pandas? A little bit, Tony? Seven to nine. Yeah, seven to eight, yeah. And, and the, the level? Low. Low, like elementary basically. So I basically did um, a lesson on animals, because that's you know, one popular topic. Um, and then just two, we did animals, we did spelling, just pronunciation. And then to follow that up, we had a look at this website. This one called Digger's Party. All, all the task was, was to watch the video and with a worksheet, write down the animals that they could see and so write them and spell them at home. And also, what I did, I wrote on a set of paper with some, so that you had the, the web address, the task, the worksheet, and then I explained it to them and then some of the parents that came in, I explained to them as well so they could, they could help. With, with an aim to show them this website, it's a bit of exposure, <laughs> the video is a bit... The language is probably above their, it's, it's well above their level, but it's exposure to, to new language, they can see the animals in context. So if you want to have a quick, quick uh, it's only short. Prize for you. They're holding a goodbye and good luck party for Digger. We did some party food for you. Carrots, a bit of leftovers, grass and, and some biscuits. Yum. Oh, thanks, but I'm not very hungry. No one's really in the party mood, except the ducks. The ducks are always in the party mood. Right, Anne? You look cool. Love what you've done to your heaven. Thanks for all this, but it really is time for me to go. Bye, Bye Digger. Digger. So long. Love you. Oops. It's okay, Gumbo. We all love Digger. What? Oops. I've got um, the website, I've got the videos, there's a task, and the parents are involved. So the aim of it is to raise the awareness of the website. And I think the video is quite motivating, there's music, the, the images are good, and the images are for our, like I said, motivating for the students. So there'll be more, they'll be keen to look at other videos, and then they'll bring up questions, they might ask, they might bring it to the teacher in, in the next lesson. So just to kind of get them into using websites, really, and with exposure to English. So that, that's, the, that's the first one. Um, Watch and listen, story time! So you asked a question, did you get much feedback from parents about that or not? I just said it was, I had a couple because a few of them came in after class and they said it was good that they had some direction about how they could use the web with, yeah. their, with their kids. Because we, um, we did did some parent sessions on how to use websites and how to use them at home with their, with their children. And it was just a follow-on from that really, so yeah, it, was, it went down pretty well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just good to send just a little slip home with, with, with how to use it, so it was good. Um, the next one was um, more for error correction and to follow up on activities. We've been, it was with Tigers. Tigers is uh, age 9 to 11, pre-intermediate level. We've been doing some, some writing and it came, and I was trying to do some correction and trying to highlight different parts of speech. So we did some writing on it. And they weren't very aware of it, so we pre-taught the different parts of speech so we could sort of do some work on, on sentence structure. So the, the website that we gave that I gave them is this one. So see, I think some of you already know this, but um, so it gives them a kind of an idea of what each part of speech and, and an example. And then they're given a sentence. They have to click on the correct part of speech. And the aim 
if you get the correct answer, then they, they give a banana to the gorilla. So it has a bit of motivation, and if they don't, then obviously the gorilla goes, goes a bit hungry. So you can, but if you do get it wrong, it gives you the explanation. And if you, if you get it right, you get a banana. And it goes through the activity and you get bananas and the dickhead, it gets corrected. And then so that was just to kind of raise our awareness and give a bit of, cons bit of practice on the parts of speech. Then in the, in the following class, the beginning, use the website as a warmer, as a team, more of a team activity, and the team that knew it could come to the board and choose, choose the correct part of speech. So that's a, and then obviously with, when, they've, when they've got that website, then you can draw them to a different activity with the same website because they've already, they've already used it. There's, one on, there's another one in here for plurals, stuff like that, it's called the Plural Girls. Which is uh, interesting, which is quite good. Right. And there's also for the same kind of uh, error, error correction. Right, this is more for older, for juniors and seniors, so from 12 to 17. Um, another thing that came up from writing was the fact, was the lack of awareness of, of how to write a sentence, basically. And basic structure. So there's this this website here. This is a here we go. This is called Skillswise. This is aimed at um, this is a website to support weaker students in the UK. Uh, I think GCSE level. So one thing that came up even with quite quite high level seniors was the fact was that they weren't writing sentences. It's just so if you go to this section. So set some stuff with you know, making simple sentences, putting them together with, with discourse markers, things like that. So I've actually I've used various sections from it throughout the course, and then we, just to, to follow it up, we did different kinds of editing activities. So I give them a text, a text, like a paragraph without any, any punctuation, and they, they had to punctuate it, and then we compare, and we relate it directly to the, this, we go into it. So the, there's a fact sheet which goes over the, the rules, then you can practice it in a quiz, in a game, and then you can you can go through at the beginning of the, the next class the answers, and some kind of editing activity just to follow it up. So that's the second one. And the final was more for recording vocabulary. It was with junior C class. Any any ideas about the age and level of junior C? 12 to 14? Yeah. And looks like intermediate plus. Yeah, intermediate and above. I think we was we were, it was a few terms ago we were we were doing a new book about Rome and there was a lot of vocabulary, so at the beginning of the course we started looking at how to record vocabulary, pronunciation, example sentences, that kind of thing. And um, we'd also not so that we weren't always talking about Rome and ancient Rome and gladiators, we'd start talking about music as well. So to find a so it's given some extra extra listening practice. You see here, it's from the British Council of Learning English Science. To so find that choosing topics that they're motivated by, things that they're in, for example, music, there's a good section on I want to talk about. This, this one is. I want to talk about Radiohead. And it's a, a student. I think it's a, she's from. I think she's from China, but she's very high level, and she's talking about why she likes Radiohead, um, how how the music makes her feel, um, the band, his descriptions of the band, and there's lots of new vocabulary. So, try to use it, you know, listen to it, answer the questions, and then record maybe ten ten new words in in the vocabulary books, which will be be checked in the next lesson. Like in pairs, they could ask an answer. Whether they understood, and just to just to give them a bit more direction before before I send them away, you can you can print off worksheets so you can give them an idea of what they're expected to do. So you can kind of go through. You can navigate the site.